It's February 2023 and we are here with a Star Citizen update going over what you can expect during the month, new events, core and more, our content, what's happening with 3.18, there's some 3.19 updates and a whole load of exciting bits and pieces. First, the winner of January's ship giveaway that we have every month. Well, not January's giveaway every month. We have different months every month. It's John Barton. You've won an Argo Raft and Star Citizen game package. Congratulations for that. For February, we are giving away a Crusader Spirit C1 and a Star Citizen game package with lifetime insurance. If you win, you'll get a Drake Cutlass Black as a loner until that ship is flyable. Hopefully that will be later this year. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month. A quick public service announcement. I will not ask you to contact me on Telegram. There is a scammer around and going in my comments are going, Hey, I'm Broad Gamma Official. Please go to my Telegram or contact me off site. So if in doubt, you can always email me at contact or giveaway at boardgamer.co.uk. I won't contact you on any different sort of medium other than my YouTube account. You will see my YouTube account that I use to upload all my videos that is the the main one uh, to contact you. I will uh, drop you a comment and I uh, will also say, drop me an email here to confirm and then I go through a confirmation process to make sure it's you. You can always get me as well on my discord.dg forward slash board gamer. You can talk to my mods there. You can talk to me there. I am trying to get on top of that. My auto mod does delete most of the messages uh, from scammers and stuff like that, but um, it doesn't get all of them. So just sort of making people aware. A massive thank you to all of the citizens that support the channel. Zin and I are very grateful. If you want to consider going the extra mile to help support daily Star Citizen content, then maybe become a Patreon or use the join button under any of my YouTube videos. That seriously helps and seriously, my channel members and Patreons, you rock. Thank you so much especially during the slow start of the year, especially January. Oh, YouTube slashes, slashes the money that content creators make. Star Citizen Alpha 3.18 is now in wave two. So this expands out the test group on the PTU, the public test universe. An ironic title seeing that at the moment it's still invite only, but that means that Cloud Imperium have completed their work on shard isolation, giving each shard their own data pipeline. This is important because they don't want the various shards affecting each other. What exactly is wave two and how does it differ from wave one? Well. Wave 2 is also known as the active participation wave for the PTU. So this includes all of the previous waves of sort of backers, which is uh, concierge, subscribers and Evocati, but also now adds in players that are very active on the issue council and or have a very high playtime across all the game modes. However, as far as I'm aware, this is the smallest addition to a test group. So the wave two addition of those uh, players, those very active players, is actually a very small amount of people. Cloud Imperium wanted a wave two before going to open PTU so that they could validate some fixes and um, just sort of add some additional eyes and get a little bit more of a stress test going before going to open PTU. And I do believe that wave two does signify that we are going to be going shortly to an open PTU. Keep in mind my track record on predicting any form of CIG dates is pretty terrible with my expectation of 3.18 being live by the end of December, which has obviously not come to pass. There is another requisite before Alpha 3.18 can go to open PTU, and that's that, well, no new major bugs are found during that wave two build. That said, there are a couple of known issues that Clown and PM are trying to um, gonna wanna fix before open PTU that they know about already. But to me, it looks like they can be done with these by the end of the week. It does depend on how complex some of these bugs are, but that's just my expectation that they can actually clear those bugs out pretty quickly and easily. So what are the current known issues with Alpha 3.18? Well, there's not actually that many left. Clown and PM have fixed a load of stuff over the last few PTU patches, um, but the known issues currently are the P52 slash P72 docked with the constellation lacks uh, prompts to be able to enter it. Salvage RMC canisters won't attach to a multi-tool. Equipped gear can be lost when a player dies in an armistice zone. 
Scanning is not showing advanced statistics and details. Elevators and trams are jittery during transit. Some ships can't be fully salvaged. There are salvage um, sort of um, problems with some wrecks. The AI will not spawn for missions at settlements and reinforcements that don't leave their ships at these settlements will still be counted towards the hostiles remaining in those zones. The Valkyrie bottom turret locks and makes the player there invisible. Quantum interdicting does not mark that ship as a hostile, which is very annoying. Uh, destroyed ship's thrusters will still not function after being repaired. Laden Hercules C2s landed at Area 18 result in very slow frame rates or crashes. Criminals are spawning in prison with weapons and armor after dying. Cargo is invisible in various ships as well after purchasing. Cloud Imperium are also trying to solve some common server crashes as well as a ship spawning issue that has all the pads thinking they're full. Again, pretty annoying. You can expect a hotfix for this ASAP if it's not already deployed at time of video being released. So what's being tested at the moment? Well, it's focused on a few things beyond general bug capture and optimization with Clan Pym trying to encourage players to try out and give feedback on salvage and hull scraping, the Orison platform assault missions, security post Korea, the updates there going there, are doing get general gameplay there, courier delivery missions that have been updated, prison activities, the Drake Vulture, Sand Caves, Daymar Crash Site, so uh, this is Whistler's Crypt with the 600 iron Mercury Star Runner. There's the Stanton Racetrack locations, of which there are many, and there's obviously missions associated with that and time trials. The Grey Cat PTV Racetrack, though I do think that's taken a lesser priority. Uh, new Rivers, because there's 40 new rivers on Hurston and Microtech. There's also additional derelict outposts, restricted areas uh, version 3, and Arena Commander quality of life updates they're all testing. Zoon and I are going to be covering all the 3.18 sort of gameplay and features uh, as they become more playable with the open PTU and the live build. Hoping for the live build at some point in February, hopefully sort of mid-February, and uh, it's the sort of rough expectation I have. Um, 3.18 comes with a few amazing features that we're going to focus on. That's persistent entity streaming that allows for the uh, saving of sort of locational data and um, sort of server states. Then we've got salvage, that hull scraping stuff, absolutely fantastic, great new sort of gameplay loop there. Soft destruction, ships will often just be permanently disabled rather than explode and once they're taken out, obviously you can shoot them more to blow them up if you want. Uh, the player crew, if it's player crew, will survive, NPC crews will be killed, but then you can go and assault that ship, you can take its cargo, its cargo's intact, so you have some boarding stuff going on, there's sort of wrecks are still floating around in space because of persistent entity streaming, and you can salvage them, oh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but also, one of my favourite additions here is that there are more ships and vehicles in the in-game shops, Pretty much everything that's flyable is now in the in-game shops that's not a promo other than the Vulture. Alpha 3.18 is by far the biggest patch since we've had since 3.0. It has obviously been heavily delayed though. It should be worth the wait. If there's anything specific that you want Zen and I to take a look at with 3.18, please check it in the comments below. So there's a lot more that's coming out in February. So pretty soon, in about a week in fact, we've got the big roadmap update which will give a load of context what Cloud and Pyramid have got going on for 3.19 and um, the sort of tone for 2023. Are we going to potentially see 4.0 by the end of the year? Maybe in Evocati testing is my gut feeling, but um, I do think it's going to be a patch like 3.18. It's going to be uh, a lot of work to get it uh, to a playable state. Cloud Imperium are starting to talk a lot about 3.19 now. We know that there's been a load of work on new derelicts and modular habs using derelict ship pieces. So there's loads of new ground locations and assets for building out these settlements on planets. You're going to see that in 3.19. You're going to see cargo updates in 3.19, making much uh, better use of the cargo refactor, probably with larger cargo containers, among other things. They're going to try and revive Arena Commander as well as a game mode. There's even potentials for Lawville 2.0, sort of expanding out that city and um, munching for salvage as well, the sort of next stage of salvage. The Hull Sea looks like it's going to be in 3.19 and potentially a few other ships and vehicles. So we'll be covering all that information that Cloud Imperium are putting out about that patch as well. We've got the monthly reports coming out, so we'll be covering those. So that's for the Persistent Universe, but obviously Squadron 42 as well. Lots of AI information is normally put in there. Now these will give much 
greater context for what's going on with the roadmap update as well. There's a few other things that are coming during the month. Assuming that 3.18 actually gets released live, you'll see Jumptown 2.1, which is a much bigger version of Jumptown, basically new double-sized locations with two dispensaries. Potentially, we will see the um, rerun of Xenothreat, but with the addition of persistent entity streaming, salvage, and the soft destruction system, and the cargo factor all sort of coming together. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, it makes for a much better event. There is also Core and More, so that's Valentine's Day, typically around the 14th of February. Cloud Imperium have like ships that have silly Valentine skins or are uh, two seaters, things like that, on sale or with special skins or whatever. So yeah, that's what we're looking at for February. It should be reasonably good month assuming that we get alpha 3.18 to live we should see open pt within the next couple of weeks we should see that live build hopefully really soon uh, as well i'm hoping within the next two to three weeks but we will have to wait and see i'm really interested to know what you guys think of what might happen with 3.18 where are we with it when do you think it's gonna actually go to open ptu and live what features are you most excited about with 3.18 with 3.19 what do you expect to actually be in that patch and when do you think we'll have it because i'm thinking 3.19 for the end of q2 but whatever your thoughts are i'd love to hear from you in the comments below Using my vast powers of deduction, I have deduced that you may have eyes, and to make use of those, you might want a Toby Eye Tracker. They're 15% off until February 9th. They're natively supported in Star Citizen for eye and head tracking. Oh, I can look around everywhere. Check out my links below for that, or go to toby.gg slash boardgamer to get that fantastic deal. Ooh. That's the last Chevron knocked in, Mr. Daniel Jackson, who is legally distinct from any doctors of the same name. We've done it. We've connected to another world. Daniel Jackson, we're being hacked through the gates to the stars, which is also legally distinct from any other gates that travel to the stars. We should have got NordVPN, Daniel Jackson. We would have been able to browse the internet safely, accessed our favorite content on Netflix, and we would have been able to have privacy. We would have had less of these Egyptian-looking snake people attacking us too. You should check out nordvpn.com slash boardgamer and get yourself a great deal on NordVPN.